So here we are with the uh, Texas Instruments um, CAS calculator. We could use really any graphing calculator for this uh, video. And um, we just uh, are going to use a, a quadratic x squared minus x minus 6. Um, that's easily factorable. And uh, we're actually going to enter into um, enter this into our graphing part of our calculator as a rational function. So we'll enter x squared minus x minus 6 and we are going to divide that by the order 1 linear polynomial x plus 5. And so we have an order 2 polynomial divided by an order 1 polynomial. That's very very important when we look at oblique asymptotes that the order on top is one more than the order on the bottom. So notice that we have x plus 5 as the vertical asymptote exactly where we expect it and there and that's because x plus 5 is on the bottom so negative 5 is the vertical asymptote but we got this mysterious linear asymptote it looks like it's on some kind of a slanty line that's called an oblique asymptote let me explain Well, oblique asymptotes are usually functions of a very characteristic shape. You have kind of like a curve in two parts, almost like a hyperbola, that is um, that has two asymptotes quite often. One of them is this kind of slanty asymptote, and the other one is vertical. Uh, there's never a slanty asymptote and a horizontal asymptote. It's interesting to note. And that slanty asymptote is called an oblique asymptote, which I have here in the, in the form of a red dotted line. Now, it's curious to know if they actually have an equation. If it is a line, it must have an equation. And can we actually find out what that equation is? And through the techniques of long division, yes, we can. It's also important to note that there is no other way to find an oblique asymptote other than through long division. Although, with our current example, uh, it is so simple because we have an order 1 divided into an order 2, you could use synthetic division for this particular problem, but you'll find that with higher order polynomials divided by other higher order polynomials, this is not going to be entirely practical. In fact, it won't be possible. Uh, long division will be, in fact, the only way out. And uh, just for completeness, we'll just add in this uh, equation that this is actually the equation of x squared minus x minus 6 all divided by x plus 5. Um, or at least that's what this graph represents. It's definitely not an entirely accurate graph. So using long division, uh, we have our polynomial here. Um, x squared minus x minus 6 divided by x plus 5. Well, uh, for the x squared part, it goes in x times and we get x squared plus 5x. When we subtract 5x from negative x, we get negative 6x. We bring down the negative 6. And that allows us to subtract 6 up top. 6 times x is going to be negative 6x. Now this takes me a long time to think, probably because I have a cold or something. But six, negative 6 times 5 is negative 30. Now when we subtract negative 30, we get a number positive 24. And we can't do anything with it. It's a remainder. Now, it's interesting. Uh, what do we do with the x minus 6 and what do we do with the remainder? Well, uh, I will tell you here that... All you need to do with the remainder is throw it away. Just discard it. It's not needed. And you go up to the x minus 6, and that is uh, going to be the equation for the oblique asymptote, which I will uh, prove in a moment. So here I'm going to enter 
the line and there it is the oblique asymptote exactly fitting where it's supposed to and that is good from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity that function will never cross that oblique asymptote although it is known to sometimes cross it uh, usually toward the y-axis at you know equa usually toward the y-axis but as x approaches infinity the um, equation will approach the oblique asymptote and the same for negative infinity now in conclusion oblique asymptotes will tend to occur um, in rational functions when both the numerator and the denominator are polynomials and you know say for example um, maybe we let n of x be the numerator And, of course, underneath we'll call the denominator d of x another polynomial. But there are strict restrictions on this polynomial. And first, let, let us say uh, that we, it is now possible to define a rational function, r of x, as being n of x divided by d of x. And, most importantly, the order of n of x is one more than the order of d of x. It always is true. Now, it also means that if the numerator happens to be order 3, like a cubic, then the bottom must be order 2. In fact, let us explore just such a situation on the uh, TI-Inspire calculator. Now, let's... <clears throat> just enter our new rational function here. This time it'll be a cubic divided by a quadratic to show that we still get a oblique asymptote um, just because the order on top is one more than the order of the polynomial on the bottom. So we're going to enter 2x cubed minus x squared minus 5x minus 2. And we're going to divide this by a quadratic x squared minus 4x plus 3. Okay, so let's see what happens to that. As you can see here, the order on top is in fact one more than the order on the bottom. We have order 3 on top, order 2 on the bottom. Press enter and we get, well, a rather strange one. There's an oblique asymptote there, all right, and this time there will be two vertical asymptotes. I did that by design because if uh, you look at x squared minus 4x plus 3, that comes into two factors if you try to factor it. And, uh, of course, there's also this oblique slanty asymptote, which we must find the equation of. And um, there's also that middle section which crosses the oblique asymptote and that's okay because oblique asymptotes are allowed to be crossed you know every so often and in this case exactly once uh, you'll notice that the same was true for um, horizontal asymptotes that from time to time they can be crossed as well but as always vertical asymptotes are never crossed so, indeed, how do we find the oblique asymptote for r of x equals this rational function that we just entered into our calculator? Well, as we said before, long division is the only way to do this. So, I'm going to syn not synthetically divide, but use long division to divide the denominator into the numerator. The rules for long division of these kind of uh, polynomials are exactly the same as if what you were dividing into was simply a linear uh, binomial 
expression, but this time we have a trinomial, it doesn't stop us from doing things exactly the same way. We simply look at x squared, ask ourselves how many times does it go into 2x cubed? It goes in 2x times, and we multiply through by 2x to get 2x cubed minus 8x squared plus 6x. x squared minus negative 8x is positive 7x squared. Negative 5x, take away 6x, uh, makes negative uh, 11x, and we bring down the minus 2. We look at the 7x squared in front, and notice that x squared goes in 7x times, or I'm sorry, 7 times, and uh, 7 times negative 4 is negative 28x, and 7 times 3, they're both positive, we're going to get positive 21. You take away now, 11 take away negative 28x is like adding um, 28x, and we get positive 17x, and then negative 2 take away 21 will be negative 23. And now we come across a conundrum. There is no other terms to add for the long division, and we still have an x in the expression. Now remember the reason we're doing this. We're not trying to factor. We're not trying to find the remainder. We're not, our objective is not to um, find any kind of numerical remainder. So because 17x minus 23 is of a lower order than x squared minus 4x plus 3, then in effect that really is the remainder. You might find it hard to accept, but once you actually plot these things on the graph, I think there will be no argument that you can simply throw this away just like you threw away all the other remainders in your oblique asymptotes and accept that 2x plus 7 is now the oblique asymptote that as, um, as x goes to infinity of the function of the rational function that the um, function will converge on the oblique asymptote 2x plus 7 and that's it not 2x plus 7 plus any remainder just 2x plus 7. Now we're going to uh, take a look at uh, the effect of adding our line and just showing that it does in fact uh, look very much as though this is the oblique asymptote and um, as you can see here uh, 2x plus 7 certainly looks like it as uh, as x gets very very large um, the uh, asymptote gets closer and closer to it.